For number 47, you have to factor the expression by taking out the greatest common factor. Well, the greatest common factor between 225, 30, and, 50, and 45 is 15. Between a cubed, a squared, and a cubed is a squared. Between b squared, b cubed, and b cubed is b squared. Now you're going to have to divide into what's left over. 225 divided by 15 is 15, and a cubed, and I'm taking out a squared, leaves me with an a. b squared divided by the b squared that I took out in the GCF, this goes away. 30 divided by 15 is 2. a squared divided by a squared, it's 1, I don't have to write anything b cubed divided by b squared does leave a b. 45 divided by 15 is 3. a cubed divided by a squared leaves an a. And b cubed divided by b squared leaves a b. Number 48 says to factor the polynomial by grouping the terms together two at a time. If I group these two together and then these two together, I can then take out a GCF from the first two factors, and the GCF would be 3x squared. If I divide those factors by 3x squared, I have 4x minus 3. I take a GCF out of this one, and that would be a positive 2, and I'm left with a 4x minus 3. Now I have a greatest common binomial factor of 4x minus 3 and my GCFs, 3x squared plus 2. If I'm going to factor number 49, that is a perfect square trinomial. You can use guess and check or if you recognize the perfect square trinomial, you know that it's minus 2 and minus 2, which could be written as x minus 2 quantity squared. You can always check that using FOIL. First times first, x times x is x squared. Outside is negative 2, inside is negative 2, which gives me a negative 4 total, and negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. Number 50 asks you to factor by first factoring out the greatest common factor. Well, that's first. So the greatest common factor there is just a 3. I am left with x squared plus 10xy plus 25y squared. That will factor, again, x squared factors into x times x, and 25 factors into 5y and 5y. You may leave it like that, or you may write it as x plus 5y quantity squared. Don't forget to include your 3 as your GCF out front. 52 asks you to factor the polynomial completely. That is, once you are finished factoring, none of the factors you obtain should be factorable. There is not a GCF amongst those three terms. So we are going to try to factor into two binomials. 64 will factor into 8x times 8x, and 9y will factor into 3y times 3y. Since this is a negative 48, I'm going to put a subtraction sign in between, and then double check. Outside would give me negative 24, and inside would give me negative 24, xy on both. 24 plus 24 is 48. So I can also write this one as the quantity of 8x minus 3y squared. 53 asks us to factor y to the fourth minus 256. Well, y to the fourth is going to factor into y squared and y squared, and negative 256 is positive 16 and negative 16. That is known as a difference of squares. 
but this is another difference of squares, so I need to factor that one I even further. Y minus 4 and Y plus 4, giving me my final answer as Y squared plus 16 times the quantity of Y minus 4 times the quantity of Y plus 4. For 54, the equation is already in factor form. Use the special zero factor property to set the factors equal to zero and solve. So if they already have 2y, I just set it equal to zero and divide by 2. So if I divide by 2, zero divided by anything is zero. There's one answer. The second parentheses has 9y minus, sorry, plus 1. Set that equal to zero. Subtract my 1, 9y equals negative 1, and divide by 9, y is equal to negative 1 ninth. And the third factor, 9y plus 4, set that equal to 0, move the 4 over, 9y is equal to negative 4, divide by 9, and y is equal to negative 4 ninths. For number 55, it asks you to solve the equation. In order to solve that, we need to get that into factored form. So I'm going to take out a GCF of 3, and I'm left with 4x squared minus 16x plus 15. That can then be factored into 2x and 2x. And my factors of 15 are negative 3 and negative 5. I'll double check. That is negative 10 plus negative 6, which is negative 16, so it is right. I don't have to set this in equal to 0 because it does not have a variable. So I take the 2x minus 3, set it equal to 0, and the 2x minus 5, and set it equal to 0. Move my 3 over, that's 2x is equal to 3. Divide by 2, x is equal to 3 halves. Move my 5 over and 2x is equal to 5. Divide by 2 and x is equal to 5 over 2. For number 56, you are asked to solve for the indicated variable. And it has d is equal to r t s. I'm solving for s, which means they are multiplying. Therefore, I'm going to divide by r and t. My R's would cancel, my T's would cancel, my S is all by itself. So D over RT is equal to S. For number 54, sorry, 57, 50 is 20% of what number? I am going to choose to use is over of is equal to percent over 100. 50 is, so that's where my 50 goes with the is. 20%, so my 20 goes for my percent, there's always a 100 underneath the percent, of what number, so I do not know that number, and then I can just cross multiply, so I end up getting 20x is equal to 5,000. When I divide by 20, my x is equal to 250. Number 58 asked me to solve the difference of a number and 7 is negative 3. Well, difference means to subtract, and a number, I'm going to use x. x minus 7 is means equals negative 3. If they want me to find that number, I have to add 7 to both sides.